high, we wanted to provide an overview of the fiscal health model, the online tool, and some of its general capabilities, um, starting with the approach to data visualization to begin with through the unique lens of, of fiscal health. Second, looking at uh, live scenario planning. Uh, third, the ease of data entry and modification to forecasts. And then finally, uh, some of the more uh, robust reporting capabilities and where we're headed with that. So this is the online uh, fiscal health uh, portal. And as we log in, uh, each user has their own unique username and password uh, for general security and, and protection. But as you see, as we look into the city of Wheat Ridge, um, uh, we are gonna start with data visualization. And through the principles of fiscal health, uh, one of our main ideas, concepts, is the separation between the ongoing side of the world, what we see over here, uh, and the one-time side of the world. And what makes this so unique is that the online fiscal health model um, not only is translating your financial information, but providing this uh, translation, this uh, picture, as we apply the analysis, the understanding of our, our revenue sources more ongoing in nature than one time, and what do we know uh, similarly on the expense side of the equation. So as we can see in this particular picture, we do have the uh, separation over time of our ongoing revenues uh, and our ongoing expenses. And over here on the one-time side, our one-time sources of money are our one-time expenses, and of course, our reserve policy. Now you see, just in terms of general orientation, our fiscal health scoreboard is a drop-down. Uh, and clearly from this picture, we can see that in 2013, that's that first year that we have the structural imbalance taking place on the ongoing side of the world. Uh, and while we're trying to make sure um, that we communicate in a picture and very simply, if we need to get into the order of magnitude of the size of that gap, um, clearly in the scoreboard, that's where we're keeping track of the fact that it's a $2.1 million shortfall uh, in the first year that we're not achieving this particular objective is 2013. But we can roll that window up uh, so it's not uh, confusing or overwhelming the dashboard and get back to uh, the main picture as always. So just like in the Excel version of the tool, um, all of our choices are live. So if we wanted to uh, look at the impacts of using some of our one-time money to fund the ongoing structural imbalance uh, that takes place live. So here we've used 2013 to use some of this one-time money and we applied it over to our one-time side of the world and pushed our imbalance out one year. Um, we can do it again for 2014. And as you can see, we're, we continue to deplete the uh, one-time source of funds uh, as we try to balance the ongoing structural imbalance. And we can continue to do that through the end of the model. Uh, and if we want to ever remove a year, um, that's simple to do. We remove the entry and let the model know that's what we want to do, and, and it's um, easy to take back. And if we want to add that year again, uh, the model, um, we can actually do it for several years in a row. But if we wanted to just look at uh, one year, 2018 in this case, um, we can submit it again. So that's, that's what we're looking at. Down below, of course, uh, our funding sources, these being any opportunity uh, to increase our revenues, and over here, these are our initiatives. Many organizations use it as their uh, portal to incorporate um, what if scenarios for their capital plans. Uh, and of course, for every capital plan that we um, enter in, uh, we know that there's a one time uh, size to the project and it could be multi year. Uh, and those cap, those one time projects oftentimes have ongoing costs associated with them. Uh, so easily updatable and modified scenarios for any of the projects that we're considering approving uh, or disapproving. So as we get into these different scenarios, uh, another part of the online modeling that was really important to us was the ability for um, different users uh, to create scenarios, explore their what ifs, um, and also build on the baseline data um, or the uh, most up-to-date and accurate data that we have. So you have the ability to do that. If I was gonna create Chris's um, new scenario, and I wanted to apply it to our combined picture of the general fund and the capital fund in, in Wheat Ridge's case, I can do that and I can copy uh, from the baseline, create the new scenario, and voila, I'm now working in a unique um, uh, 
what if scenario planning situation where every new project that I add, every change in assumption does not pollute the baseline data, um, this is saved as my scenario. So for organizations who have the desire to uh, equip their elected officials um, with use of the fiscal health model, they can explore their what if scenarios. Uh, the finance and budget office can be support to them as they create uh, creative scenarios, um, but they become, they become unique to them. Uh, and again, don't corrupt the, the baseline data. So that's really important. Another thing we wanted to demonstrate is in here the ability that as you set up the data entry, and this is as we move now into the ease of data entry, um, we can set up multiple funds. And we can also combine funds. In Wheat Ridge's case, they had a general fund, and through a, a simple transfer, um, they were sending money over to the capital fund. But really, the management of those resources could be seen a lot more clearly in the combined view, this being the combined view of the general fund and the capital fund, um, so we can see those all together. Uh, you can add many different funds as we come in here to the uh, data setup screen. Um, our account setup is just as simple as setting up the general ledger and mimicking that. For some organizations that want to actually create a direct link between your financial system and the online fiscal health model, that's possible as well. Uh, but here we're going to just look very quickly at the general fund where we've already set this up in Wheat Ridge's case. Here is their uh, general ledger. Um, all of their expense accounts, their parent accounts are all entered in here. So it's a quick setup. It's really easy. Uh, and in the screen as well, we have the ability to um, approach our uh, known projection methods. If we have something more like a constant annual projection or a projection that takes place in constant amounts uh, periodically every few years, um, we can set up the projection that way. Or we can set up specific year-by-year -year projections as well. So I want to show you what that looks like as we get back into the data entry component. Here is, uh, for the city of Wheat Ridge, all of their data uh, incorporated into, and let's just look at the revenue side of the equation here first. Um, for ease of maneuvering around in the model, um, the categories roll up to the parent account, uh, but we can quickly get into the, the sub-accounts. And if we wanted to look here, for instance, at all of the sales tax entries taking place um, and whether they're ongoing or one time in nature, whether they're actual uh, dollars or they're um, a part of the budget uh, or they're a future year estimate. Um, if 2013 is our adopted budget and these future years are estimates, uh, this is how we are able to keep track of all the information. And this becomes important as we want to take a look at um, reporting on this. What numbers do we have that are actual? What numbers do we have that are uh, budgeted numbers? And what our future forecasts include? Well, let's say in Wheat Ridge's case, we wanted to, um, we're in the middle of a meeting and we wanted to actually change some of the assumptions that are taking place. We can come in and look at the fact that in our projections, right now for sales taxes, we chose a constant annual projection. Right now, the uh, model is demonstrating our input of a 2% annual projection. And if our commissioners or our uh, discussion led us into a, uh, a place where we wanted to explore, well, what does a, a 3% increase look like um, 2014 through 2018 or the end of the model? It's as easy as making that update right here. Uh, we submit the new projections. And as you can see, if we come back into sales tax, um, here's where the new projection takes place. And that's taking place uh, throughout the end of the model. If we wanted to go back and change that, um, we can go back into the model and say, let's get that back to 2.5% uh, 2014 through 2018. And now our assumptions are going to be uh, modified and updated within the model as well. So uh, this is really cool. We can check our assumptions as we go. Everybody's clear about what we've just done. And now we come back to the main dashboard and we can see, you know, here's what that new projection would have done in this scenario uh, and how it would have changed. So for all of our discussions where we want to dive into the variables, make changes on the fly, and see what the impacts would be um, that's happening in, in real time. Finally, we, we wanted to demonstrate some of the concepts that organizations are using for reporting on this information. And right now, I'm just uh, unplugging all of the choices to plug the gap with ongoing or uh, with one-time money. Um, for in any of these screens, we can print the screen, and uh, we can zoom in a lot more closely, say, on what's taking place on the ongoing side of the world, 
and we can print from here if we wanted just to um, incorporate this kind of uh, graph into our uh, reports. Similarly, on the one-time side of the world, um, we're also developing. Remember, in, in the data setup, we have uh, all of our different parent accounts and sub accounts. If we wanted to um, dive into this and actually see what accounts make up our ongoing revenue sources, our ongoing expenses, uh, we can dive into that as well. And similarly, on the one-time side of the world, you know, what is in here? What's what makes up this blue bar? Um, so we can get a visual representation of uh, those particular sources. So uh, that's a very quick overview of the model itself, the functionality, uh, how data entry works, what we're trying to accomplish with our what ifs and scenario planning. And the last thing that I wanted to demonstrate is that for any of our users, um, as you approach uh, this particular setup, you might want to be establishing um, users who are at an administrator level. So um, that being the person who's keeping the, the true baseline data, um, you might have an agency administrator. So that's someone who you're, you give other privileges to. It might be a department head um, who wants to create their own scenarios in the model. Uh, and again, they, they are not able, they're restricted from uh, modifying the baseline data. We just have users. So some organizations besides their own elected officials, besides just um, staff across the organization are wanting to use online fiscal health modeling to create a sense of total transparency uh, so that people in the organization can, can actually see what the projections are. Um, they can create their own scenarios, modify them. So now we have a, um, a, a unified understanding of the assumptions behind the model. And some organizations are also even looking towards um, expanding this to citizens in their community, giving them the chance to play with the model. Uh, again, these are uh, all of these are capable and you can set up different levels of user um, within the environment to restrict their ability to modify the baseline uh, and keep that uh, always under the control of, of the overall administrator. As more organizations get into using the model, um, we do have a training component where we will be posting videos, more frequently asked questions. Um, essentially, as uh, the user base grows, and we see different needs for different approaches to modeling, um, we want to expand the uh, training module so that everybody knows how to update information, how to create their scenario. Say I want to model what um, freezing vacancies looks like in the organization. You can go in the training model module and, and find out well, how, how might you create a scenario that does that, that freezes salaries and wages and benefits, um, those sorts of things. What if we wanted to look at the impact if you're in a particular department of submitting a new project. In this case, uh, in Wheat Ridge, um, we had this dispatch center that's included. Um, if I'm a department head and I just want to explore that scenario, uh, you might want to visit the, the uh, training module and understand, well, how do I actually um, generate a one-time project, uh, make sure that it comes with ongoing costs, and I want to look at this from the perspective of the general fund, how do I go through those steps to create that scenario? So that's what's envisioned for the training component and that will be a library of resources that builds, um, again, as more and more users get into using the online model. Uh, lastly, we see this gear box. Um, we do have the ability to uh, hold steady the time window and also the window on the ongoing side of the world and the one-time side of the world. Uh, so these are up to the user to establish just, again, for ease of um, printing out these reports, ease of looking at this consistent window. Uh, those kind of functions that you see in Excel are mimicked here so that we can choose the window of time we want to look at. We can set the minimum and maximum of the charts uh, and have the ability to create the uh, window on our variables that we wish to choose. Uh, with that, that's a, a general high-level overview of the fiscal health online model. And uh, we will be generating more updates to come. Thank you very much.